And we're back. This is episode 437 of the Columbia Calling Podcast. I'm Richard McCall here in Bogota, Colombia. My very special guest needs no introduction. He's a fan favorite or listener favorite. Adrian Alsima, director of Columbia Reports there in Medellin. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, sort of getting back into the swing of things after so long in, in, in my, you know, in England, in London. Uh, but uh, yeah, back, back here for this. Uh, well, I was back in time for the inauguration of uh, President Petro. Still sounds, say, sounds funny to say it, doesn't it? President Gustavo Petro, given that he, he, he that he, uh, hang on a second. So I've got a visitor in the in the studio, but that's fine. It sounds strange to uh, to say President Petro. So how are you feeling about this, Adrian? I mean, you've been an, a long time observer of the Colombian uh, situation. So tell us about these first twenty days of Petro's well, presidency. <laughs> well, for it's like it's weird for me too because like when when I start writing. Like I also like like President Ivan Duque, and then I'm like, oh no, backspace, Gustavo Petro. <laughs> it's it's still um, uh, complicated. Like, well, um, it's new, and it's in it's interesting how um, um, how different the whole atmosphere has become. Like like. The, the like the political climate is uh, completely different yeah you know i feel kind of relaxed i don't feel tense like i did every single day under yeah. duke i, do, I don't <laughs> know i don't know how how that works but <laughs> like the the day that petro took office it, it was like a well more like the day that like duke left office <laughs> like i was like oh I'm not gonna die anymore. Like <laughs> it did feel like, like just disregarding about like how like my expectations of uh, Petro as a president, like the fact that Duca was uh, was out of office, well, had 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 just a, a a tremendous effect. I didn't expect it. Yeah, you know, because I mean, the inauguration. It felt like a celebration. It didn't feel like a ceremony. It didn't feel like something sort of particularly official. It felt to me, and of course, I mean, we've discussed, I've discussed this before in the podcast, the, the, the petty back and forth of the, uh, oh, and well, but, and, but of course, the symbolic significance of the sword, Bolivar's sword. But then since then, there have been more kind of scandalous things coming up in that, you know, Mrs. Duque didn't allow mrs petro to come in and check the uh you know check the rooms or make mm -hmm. a, 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 make make changes and stuff he said this is our house up until the last minute so we're getting all these little sort of i, I mean they're just conversation bits but it's quite amusing to see this relationship that that took place this this or lack of relationship well the, but, but the, it, it just typifies like the 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 authoritarianism of of Duca um, and his wife, like yeah. like they literally believed like that the presidential palace like was theirs, mm -hmm. like like, um, and and that they like a sort of like a, a might makes right attitude, you know <laughs> that that that's kind of typifies like the Duke presidency, yeah, and, I, and, and so going. far like. Petro hasn't given the same impression to me. He hasn't at all. I also thought wanted to say before we move on to anything else about Petro, I said, so the Woodrow Wilson Center, and then we're going to get off Duque, has given former President Duque like a you know celebrated spot on their staff, and the press release said, you know, for his unwavering commitment to furthering or sustaining democracy and uh, for his work on climate change and his knowledge of displaced or migratory populations. And you're like, have they even paid attention to the last four years in Colombia? What actually has been happening here? You sort of we're celebrating a man who's well they just don't care <laughs> no, it's i true. mean i'm like i don't know i don't know 
an American friend told me that like every president gets like a sort of like a center like that. So mm. like there's also like a Richard Nixon center, I assume. <laughs> like I, I, I don't know how that works. I don't even understand why why those centers even exist. Uh, um, but but clearly like they function as a sort of like a influence peddling organizations, I assume, like like where they because like I I read up on like what that center like what, what its purpose was and it was like advocating like for America's leadership in uh, as a force for good in the world and blah 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 so like you're dealing like with all these like geopolitical they're just trying to main keep keep themselves relevant by by having inroads into like form foreign governments it also sounds rather than a think tank that it's sort of set up to help lobbyists you know it's that's what I've, i mean you just feel well well frankly i i just don't i'm i'm like i just don't know anything about american politics like i'm, I'm not particularly like if i were i would have moved there <laughs> all but right I'm, well I'm moved to colombia our uh uh, our meme of a president, former president, has moved on. He's still tweeting. He's still tweeting. It's a, it's quite amusing. Uh, he's still got an axe to grind. Well, of course, it's only been twenty odd days, uh, and so therefore he's he's uh, you know tweeting out things about how amazing he's been. But let's move on. Let's. See. I mean, that's that's the past. We have to deal with it, of course. Uh, Gustavo Petro, third attempt at winning the presidency, has done so. Uh, the impression, and I read a piece out today that, you know, the, the majority of people are happy with his nominations for cabinet positions. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a hiccup here and there with Mary Gutierrez at the Mintic and the guy on transport. But today he's, he's you know, she's been signed in. It's Saturday, so she's been signed in. They, he stood by her despite the... Uh, you know, the alleged, well, no, the real conflict of interests. Uh, but let's go on. My favorite nomination. But, 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 but oh, that yeah? is like, um, that is something like that should be taken seriously uh -huh. because, like, not, not only um, uh, was she um, appointed uh, ICT minister despite mm. the evident conflict of interest, like, we don't even like. It could be that 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 the court intervenes and throws her out. Yeah. But she's also the wife or the partner of uh, Holman Morris, mm -hmm. and Holman Morris was one of the most, one of the fiercest uh, propagandists of uh, Petro um, during during his time as mayor in Bogota, mm -hmm. but also like ever after. So like like Holman Holman Morris used to be a really good journalist yeah really good like like uh during the armed conflict uh so like un until until like uh, petro gave him a job um at bogota city hall like like holman morris did stunning work mm. and then he just like became a, a propagandist and yeah. and this and this is a quite a problem because like Duke uh, gave the uh, ICT ministry like sweeping powers over um, who gets like radio licenses um, who gets TV licenses etc uh, etc et and it's really not very comforting to think that a, a fierce propagandist um has such influence over the um well over everything media in Colombia so like like of like do uh, sorry uh, Petro has appointed like really heavyweight people on on a lot of positions like a, a, like really just trustworthy people um but as a journalist 
I'm really not comfortable with um, uh, th this excessive uh, control over uh, over over media licenses and uh, and that stuff. I think this was something always to be feared as well. I think. Oh, it, know... it was it was a huge problem under un, under Duke, mm. um, and rather than um, kind of like easing things up by putting a a, a technocrat on that position, like Petro decided uh, to to kind of subject that ministry or submit that, that ministry like. Like to continue like the whole propaganda function of that of that ministry, which which I'm um, I'm not comfortable with at all. I also think that the ICT ministry is nice a, a, a cash cow. It's a good way of funneling money places as well. I, I tend to think. Of course, mm -hmm. we saw that under Abudinen, uh, the Barranquilla under Duque, and and yeah, it's, this is this is a serious point, and it does need to be criticised and it does need to be held to account. So we'll see what happens in the coming days because well, it's it's going to it's going to make uh, like media. Like the, the the role of media, um, much more important. Like, mm -hmm. um, because what we're what we can expect that there's going to be like a, a like a, a really big a propaganda force trying to tell us that everything Petro does is fucking brilliant, mm -hmm. and and it's going to be up to us to. Um, to be like well yeah that kind of sucks um, <laughs> or that th that was kind of corrupt mm -hmm. um and, and and so so like the 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 importance of 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 the news media in colombia hasn't changed the, the problem there is that under duca the uh the approval rating of news media is plummeted so like corporate media like semana um which is a magazine and uh, rcn and caracol the, the two commercial television stations um uh, their close or their proximity to the government of duca like was um like like really damaged people's trust in the media and they are now more likely to be critical of uh, of Petro, mm. but with very little credibility. You, even though, like, like they 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 will probably come up with like really like legitimate concerns about like uh, the quality of government. Mm. It's true. It's true. I wonder. How, I mean, we know that Semana will start. It's it's come out already swinging. I, was there an article somewhere about? You know the the you know sort of after the first week what what Petro has failed to do and you're like it's it's been yeah a week. That, that it's was been a RCN week. it was been a week I mean <laughs> so, but but that, but that is a problem because like um it it's nice I mean like it's absolutely historic that 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 we have a um, so called leftist government for the first time ever yeah. Um, in, in Colombia, which is cool if you're a leftist, um, but it doesn't mean anything when it comes to like good government uh, governance or um, fighting corruption. Um, it's um, and and this is like really where, where the media are are going to have to come in with like a well doing their job properly and 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 i'm not sure if like there's a lot of independent media who who will be up for it um but the the the, the biggest media outlets are probably not they wouldn't know how to properly uh criticize a government like without just like talking rubbish yeah it's it's clickbait is what it would yeah. be your headlines and mm -hmm. then we just repeat. But uh, look, we're talking about these heavyweight ministers. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can focus on 
Ivan Valeskis, yeah. uh, the Minister of Defense. I was, I have been thrilled with this nomination, frankly, because it's, it's really has taken and you know, it's taken a military doctrine and just turned it upside down. Now, there are concerns. Of course, there are concerns. And the naysayers, of which there are many, and of course, military, military families, conservatives, beyond, are saying, you know, he's an enemy me. of the armed, you, me, he's an enemy of the armed forces. Now, I don't go with that. I think what he is, no, I, is a I proponent don't go of human with... rights. Yes. Um, however, if you look at the recent um, promotional, um, like every president, when he takes office, like immediately um, promotes generals as like the commander of the armed mm. forces and the army and the national police to make sure that they're all in line with mm. uh, with, with his presidency. Um, Petro did the same. Um, what is controversial there and could be detrimental to public security um, is that Petro really wanted gender equality in the top mm. of the uh, of the national police. So what uh, what Petro and Belasquez did uh, was appoint like the highest ranking woman as a deputy police chief. Mm. But consequently, all like 21 generals that outranked uh, the new deputy police chief were forced to retire. And that's like, um, and that's a lot of knowledge. Like that, that's a lot of like experience that, that's just being expelled from the police. So the, so the main concern, like from the from the police, like obviously no one openly broke ranks, but the um, but the criticism has been, and I think that's like more than fair, is that that Petro's uh, priority of of gender equality uh, severely damaged the the. The, the well the quality of of the the police uh, generals there is this M mind you that like that the, i think that's a fair argument mm. had it not been that like the 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 leadership of the police was like really shit mm. um so like a counter argument could be like well what quality did you have yeah. like like because like the whole leadership of the police was just so incredibly it, corrupt it, like, you know i mean we have to take it from the immediate uh let's say the immediate past and look at the behavior of colombia's police force during the nationwide strikes they are and they continue to be until there's a change a branch of the military uh and of course velasquez will come in and that's one of the reasons not only human rights is to get the police out of the ministry of defense they should be i guess the interior right is that, is that where they should be moved to the ministry of the interior i understood that there's going to be a new ministry um that is uh that will be dedicated to uh peace Oh, that's right. There um, is like a peace ministry or something. It is, uh... Well, it doesn't yet exist, but no, like yeah. the idea is that it's like put under like a, a public security and peace um, ministry or something similar, which, by the way, has been recommended by the United Nations, by the Organization of American States. So like him, him pursuing that idea is not really... Uh, well, well, it's very, not revolutionary, you know, is it? like 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 <laughs> there's general consensus mm -hmm. that the current structure uh, of the police as a as a branch of the armed forces is just a horrible idea. It's true. I mean, this needs to change. And and if, if okay, so there is we can we can argue both sides. The police, you know, these twenty one generals leaving, we can argue both sides. But there does need to be 
some sort it, that does need to be a shake up that does need to be some change uh yeah, whether the, because the... like if, if you just look at like like the police are just not doing their job like when it comes to like just basic like beat cops like they're mm. just not they're just not policing like they, they are they are stopping kids like f to frisk them and stuff like even though they aren't they aren't particularly doing anything um but they're not really investigating crime you know like like and and in many cases like they're they're actively there there have been so many corruption scandals within the police like on all levels um that that the whole police force has just become uh dangerously ineffective and of course you talk about ivan velasquez and his background you know having worked in guatemala and and well, also I being ivan velasquez is a proper crime yeah crime. and the like, you know um, the false positives and and antioquia and i mean the guy comes in with a you know a resume that is it, you know he has mind-boggling for human rights in the region and this is what we need and and this well, is the, the, right the guy sound. started off in medellin like yeah. investigating the medellin cartel can you imagine the, then <laughs> then he he went on to investigate the the auc that was mm. formed also in medellin uh by by a dissident faction of the medellin cartel uh, then he went on and for the Supreme Court investigate the ties between the paramilitaries and the political establishment. I mean, the, the, the guy has thrown, the guy has, I'm not exaggerating, he, he threw more than 60 congressmen in prison. It, it's like, like, if you're corrupt, like you really, like, uh, Ivan Belasquez is like someone you should really be, be concerned about because like the guy is like he the guy doesn't know fear um, yeah I, I, and what he comes up against is kind of terrifying I I, I just want to say that well you know, not more terrifying than the Medellin cartel mm. or or the paramilitaries like mm. like the guy's really up to um, like to say that he's like against the security forces is, is so. like is ridiculous that the guy is a crime fighter. Yeah, I don't um, think he was against the security forces, but I don't. I obviously know that there's going to be friction. I mean, of course there's friction, uh, but oh, we don't yeah. think there's going to be. You know, we don't think there's going to be a military coup. I mean, the democratic traditions of Colombia don't lend themselves to this. But what they will do is probably make governing difficult. Well, there's always been the um a sort of a dissident faction within the the security forces um and you, you saw the same like when santos wa was president um like and duke basically embraced the the this this corrupt dissidence within the security forces mm. but santos like also like really tried to make sure that like uh, what I call constitutionalists uh, were in charge of, of the the army and the and the police um, and and Pedro is doing the same but that doesn't remove the a very powerful uh, corrupt element that that exists uh, be, like inside the the security forces and the national police can, can we we move to Petro's comments? about the armed forces and the police i think the they are entirely appropriate at this time you know he's saying we are not going to measure your success by you know, people killed we will measure your success by people saved mm -hmm. i mean, these of course appeal to the likes of me uh but i just think it's so nice to hear it and of course was it yesterday with the inauguration of the police or friday uh, when he said, you know, you, your job is not to uh, uh, let's uh, criminalize the fruit vendor on the street 
or, or and so on. It's that's not your job. And I just think, well, it's it's the first time that a president actually tells the police, like, look, your job is public security. Yeah. Your job is to make sure that society is safe. Mm. Um, which is kind of absurd. Um, but he has to say it. <laughs> yeah, because apparently the police doesn't doesn't understand that their job is to is to maintain and promote public safety. Mm. Um, it's it's uh, it, it's bizarre that <laughs> that the president has to like spell it out for them. I uh, move from that we can go quite nicely into pass total. So mm -hmm. total peace. Again, total peace. Great, great catch line. Great yeah. thing to do. But it's not, again, it's not a revolutionary thing. I mean, everybody's trying, well, up to a point, apart from Duque, uh, everybody's trying at some level to achieve peace, if it, whether it's Duque bombing everyone, which is not going to achieve peace, but Petro is actually talking about it. But pass total means negotiating with everyone, is in what I understand we've got to negotiate with the clan del golfo the eln what remnants of the epl the pelusos whomever which else. also is is a which again is like a continuation of the policy uh of juan manuel santos yes like santos was already talking to the agc the paramilitaries he w was already engaged in peace talks with the eln mm. um and Petro, like the, all, all those talks were dropped by Duque and, and, and Petro just like resolved like, the, the policy that was government policy under Santos. Mm. Um, it, it's really nothing. I mean, like Petro, like the, the, this it might uh, end up biting Petro in the ass. Like, like Petro ha has made it a has really created high expectations yes. of, of, of what he will be able to achieve. I mean, like he set his really high, like uh, basically like he wants like by the end of his term to, to have demobilized the ELN and the AGC and a multiple um, dissident uh, FARC organizations, organized crime groups, that's pretty uh that's a I'm, I, I mean like four years is a very small time like it it took it took Santos like mm. um like he, he he needed to stay in office for two terms in order to only demobilize the the FARC so like I'm I'm not sure if Petro will be able to live up to the expectations he's created uh, that that like public security will see a major improvement. Yeah, and of course the perceptions of public security. I mean, that's, that's that uh, you know, if people don't feel safe, then this his uh, ratings will tumble, and therefore you know it all becomes something else. I, I, I this will. I mean. If we take what he has promised and his campaign promises, he's not going to achieve them all. Let's be let's be totally cynical and honest. He's not. Uh, but well, I, on don't, the I don't. Yeah. I don't think any precedent no. in the history of the world of, of, of the world. <laughs> <laughs> but has, what has I, ever achieved that? I fear. But, but the, well, what's yeah. interesting is that you mention like public security perception. Mm -hmm. um, because Petro's policies clearly seek to affect effective public security indicators in mainly in the countryside. Mm. But if you look at like public security perception in Bogota, there's a there's a ma major discrepancy between like how much crime there actually is mm -hmm. in Bogota and how safe people feel mm. uh, because there's a really weird thing, like again with the media, um, where um, they are based in Bogota, and there's like a thing where like individual robberies, for example, are end up on the on the evening news. Mm. 
so so even if there was like only one robbery um that will end up like on the news and and that and that creates a security perception that is not necessarily um in line with uh the 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 actual situation when it comes to public safety so like what what that's concerned uh uh the police is going to have to manage what information they feed to the media too specifically in Bogota uh, yeah. because like the 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 insecurity perception in Bogota is is uh, through the roof and, well that's yeah and I mean, there's that's no it. more crime in Bogota than in than in Medellin or in Cali or you name it um, mm. People in Medellin feel a lot safer, even though they're dealing with exactly the same crime levels. Yeah, this is this is the issue, isn't it? it that, that it comes up on the front page of the newspapers or the first thing on the national news. You know, the national yeah. TV news, which is playing in the corner of every tienda del barrio, every shop, every everything else, uh, and there it is. As so, you know, a man dreadfully stabbed. The tragedy robbed of everything and yet okay it is a, destroyed yeah it's a tragedy it's true national news it is not no um you know and it's like the car accident once as well you know it's like oh and, and that whole well f for example like like rc and at one point like they uh they made a thing of uh uh of transport so like they would have like yeah. a helicopter yeah, like uh, uh, hovering over like um, yeah. the traffic and, and be like oh look at how much traffic there is like and they would only do it in Bogota yeah. so like people in Bogota were really like oh traffic is really bad um, which I bet it is it is bad but like, <laughs> but like it's not that traffic is like good anywhere in, in, in any other city but, like mm. there's like uh, like like media like RCN and and Caracol have so lost the point of informing the public that there's like a perception of failing uh, government policies that are just not coherent, like that that are not in line like with the the actual situation. That's, I want to, yeah, I mean, we've talked about this in, in another podcast with you about the press, but let's, let's be, this, I have to get back to total peace because I think that the key yeah, thing. Be, be, well, 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 be, yeah, let's go yeah. back to like, like, because like public peace or total I think, peace. I think, I think, and people aren't, I mean, it's been mentioned, but the, obviously the ELN are, are in Cuba or those who need to be are in Cuba and Cuba is the key to to peace how does this fit with the government of, of president biden and you know the this there is a whole there is a, a jigsaw that needs to be put together there uh because because the, you know for obvious reasons and i think if it needs to be in cuba with the with the appeasement of the biden administration so be it i mean the same happened with the fuck I I don't think the Biden administration is going to be much of an obstacle. Mm. Uh, the, the problem with the United States is that um, whenever like a, a Republican president comes in, it mm. comes into office, or or the Republicans like get the majority in Congress then suddenly like things become more difficult mm. um, because I mean, like there's plenty to criticize about Cuba. I mean, it is a dictatorship. Yes. So, yes. Um, but their, their contributions to peace in Colombia are also, uh, they've contributed more to peace in Colombia than any other country. Mm. So it's really, um it kind of and and you you might want to want you might want to question like the uh 
uh, why Cuba does that. Like, yeah. like this is clearly like Cuba's like a foreign policy, like where where they are saying like, oh, we promote peace, and mm. they do. Um, because then like governments like that of Colombia or 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 whatever won't like they just can't afford to be as critical about human rights violations in Cuba or or the fact that it's just a, a brutal uh, dictatorship. The same with Venezuela. like mm-hmm. Venezuela was quite keen on on becoming um, uh, one of the guarantors of the uh, the peace process with with the ELN and you wonder you you might want to ask like what what are their intentions there like like are they just like like do they genuinely want they, it's probably a really ambiguous like where they where they really do want peace in colombia um but it's also very convenient uh, for their own like political marketing yeah it's true it's, it's kind of like a, which is know, that, which is extremely cynical the, well it's true it's the soft diplomacy isn't it it's like qatar having <laughs> the world cup and uh, uh you know and saudi arabia buying football teams and so on it's this soft diplomacy abramovich with chelsea for the, the 20 years i'm putting it to football but it's such a the last episode was all about football so it's got it i've got it on my head but there's this soft diplomacy that places can do you know hosting peace accords is very public very high well, profile and very positive well but but it's also um it also puts the the prospects of it it also is a a risk um for for the prospects of peace in colombia like like if for like like we need the the ELN to demobilize. Yes. Like in, in Colombia, we, we need the ELN to demobilize in order to be able to uh basically de- like develop uh as a country. Mm. It's it's a risk that foreign governments like that of Venezuela and, and Cuba have their have their own agenda attached to it like like so i would i would i know that that, that boric the the president of chile mm. uh he allegedly offered to um hold the the, the peace talks with the eln there mm. which which i believe would be a which would increase the the stability of the talks and 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 the possibilities of of them actually like being able to continue despite like whatever like geopolitical tensions there may be between Cuba and the US and 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 whatnot. Like yeah, I can imagine that like, Boric hosting it, the Norwegians being guarantors. Then why not? You know, like, that that could work definitely. And it's, we've I, I, we've got one last mind, mind you that that, yeah. that that doesn't. I don't think that like like so far like Velasquez. Uh, has indicated that like the the peace talks will remain in Cuba. Um, so because I like clearly like the ELN has a say in like where the peace talks is, are going to be held, and and they're obviously uh, chuffed with uh, with mm. with the Cuban government. Mm. We need to just cover one more thing. In this la- in this book, as we're running out of time, but we need to well, go one more. Let thing. it be drug trafficking, please. You want to, you want to talk about drug trafficking? Because of course, it, the... it's absolutely the, the okay. most important thing. All right, go for it. What do you want to say about drug? I mean, Petra is talking about legalization. I mean, Cor- you know. well, yeah, um, and not just Petro, um, because uh, drug trafficking is completely out of control. Yes. Um, and is a, uh, a security threat and, and is corrupting uh, governments like on, on all levels, like to an extent that, 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 that I don't think has ever been the case in Colombia. So like, like, like drug trafficking is completely driving this country into the ground. Mm. Um, 
and that's going to be more, probably more of an issue uh, than like the ELN being like terrorists or or whatever like 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 drug trafficking has become um, a, a, a major national security threat. Um, it, it permeates every single layer of society, and the money, obviously, and that you know, Duque will sing the sing the you know his own praises that coca pr cultivation might be down, but the actual production of coca paste is way up uh, and uh you know the, the the cartels in whichever form they are the eln the clan del golfo all the other dissidents and so on they don't know well, they've got so much they don't know what to do with um, uh, yeah uh, i i know that in the netherlands like there there's like uh there's a surplus of cocaine like mm. they actually have like underground storages of of cocaine because like if they put it all on the on the consumer market, the price will drop and their profits go down. Amazing. So there's like there's a global excess uh, of availability in 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 cocaine, um, of which like two thirds come from Colombia, mm. um, approximately. Um, and Petro is absolutely right when he says that the the war on drugs has been an abject failure like yep. this is obvious like yeah if you look at like i looked at the cdc numbers on people who od'd in 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 america last year and it went up in like like a hundred and seven thousand americans died of um, of drug overdoses uh, in in America, mm. and we're not even talking to all the other damage that is being done by um, uh, by drug use, yeah. um, like 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 health problems. Um, in Colombia, every attempt to combat uh, drug trafficking, like with prohibition style uh, policies, have failed and mm. and will will always fail like they failed in the 1920s with alcohol and and they've been evidently failing like with uh with cocaine and whatever illicit drug like if you ban it there's going to be a mafia that's going to make money off it and uh the the, the problem has become so big in colombia that we we like I think, like for the survival of this country, we need a different approach to to drug trafficking um, and and legalizing it is well. It, it makes sense because, because like then then at least like you. Um, you 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 can you can regulate it because it's like right now like like it's 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 a genuine national security threat mm. and not just here but also like in central america and in and in mexico mm. um and it's well, ecuador right now i mean ecuador is actually producing and of course you've seen the the reports coming out of the gang violence well of course drug fueled in places like guayaquil I mean, it's a national emergency in Ecuador, uh -huh. which, which never produced previously. It was only a transport hub. And now you can see it. And so, I mean, it, it, we know the conversation, as you suggest, needs to change. The conversation around this needs and, to change. And this, is, and this is going to be extremely complicated. Oh, because, yeah. Because, like, it, con convincing any U.S. government, hmm. doesn't matter if it's a democratic uh, a party government or a Republican Party government, having them admit that they have a public uh, health crisis that needs to be attended. First of all, like that's not up to Colombia. Mm. Like, 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 like public health in the United States is nobody's business but the Americans. Um, but the ripple effect or, or, or like the consequences of like the failing public health policies in the United States are 
becoming a national security threat in um, in Latin America. And and what Petro is doing there is very interesting because he he's really making this one of his um, diplomacy um, priorities. So like he's really looking to create him and, and Boric as well uh, are really looking to create a um, an international coalition. Mm. Um, that's going to be able to tell the United States, like, look, we're we're really sorry, but we just can't. We we just we're like uh, we can't continue this uh, uh, this foreign policy of yours. Mm. Well, it, and this yeah. is really complex because, like, um, you're dealing like with like with a resistance. To, to what essentially is like an um, like a domestic issue in in the United States, mm-hmm. like the 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 drug consumption there. Well, I think we'll I mean we'll leave it at that because in a couple of weeks' time I'm going to be talking to another expert on forestry and the arc of deforestation, which was another topic that is so. Uh, you know, obviously so important, and and Petro has pegged a great deal to sort of climate change and and you know, environmental protection. So we'll be discussing that. Uh, let's take this moment, Adrian. Thank you again for such a considered and and well so clear uh, the the points. And you know, people can't accuse us of being petristas as they have before. You criticize the government where you criticize them. You criticize them where they deserve criticism. And and likewise, it's we are here as you know checks and balances. We need to discuss these things. Things are, there are great complexities in Colombia. My overwhelming feeling, is, unfortunately, cynical of course, is by the end of the four years we'll be like, oh, you, you know, he promised so much and delivered. Well probably quite little because of the frustrations in the establishments, frustrations inherent in, uh, you know, created by, I don't know, military, big business, society itself, a conservative society are going to be very, very difficult to compete with. Do you have, Adrian, any final comments then? Um, Well, yes. Um, (laughs) Because I, I think we, we need to um, uh, get over uh, this whole thing that like Petro is a leftist mm. uh, government and 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 uh, understand that like like Colombia as a country like has really uh, uh, huge problems like when it comes to poverty uh, and food security and public security um that need to be dealt with and yes. and it it really doesn't matter like w- whether a government is leftist or or not um like we we cannot like we're wasting our time if we are going to be bitching about whether capitalism is better than socialism and blah 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 it doesn't fucking they're, hmm. they're both they're both shit and 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 we have problems like with people starving to death, mm. uh, people getting like massacred by the dozens b- by drug traffickers. These are not ideological issues, but like really big problems that require an effective government response. Yeah. yeah. And if and if a leftist government per, like has the response, then like well, go for it. Yeah. Well, I think you're right on that. The food security, I, I, I think, and he, yeah, um, massively, massively important. Um, well, we'll bring this to an end now. This is yes. Yeah, cool. so, well, so, so like the whole thing, like that you and I would be petristas, or, oh, yeah. or, 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 or like, so fucking what if we <sighs> were? You know, it's... like, like, um, we got fucking problems to deal with. Yes. Um, like, like, like our perceived political preference really isn't the problem um like uh, it's not a threat to public security it's yeah. not a threat to public health uh, yeah 
like 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 it's we need to focus on on what's actually uh, what are actually like policy issues in Colombia rather than like uh, revert to some kind of like obsolete Cold War uh, debate. This is right. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Let's bring it end to episode 437. A great big thank you to Adrian Alsema, director of Columbia Reports. Throw a few dollars at it on patreon.com forward slash Columbia Reports. Equally so, Columbia Calling. Patreon.com forward slash Columbia Calling. You know, just throw a couple of dollars our way to ensure that the indie media continues to tell the stories coming out of Colombia and share the news. Uh, of course, he's been on, I don't know how many times you've been on now, like six, seven, eight, something like that. But we'll get him back in a few months time and we'll we'll reflect on what we said and how things are going. And of course, keep checking in when he's got uh, other stories to share. I'll go over now to some uh, words from our sponsors. And then, of course, remember to tune in, subscribe and share the Columbia Calling podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening and goodbye. <laughs>